There is huge truth in the song that we just sang. Our problem is, I'm not sure a lot of us believe it. This, I'm going to stand over here just so you know this isn't in my sermon notes. <laughs> this is just what happened to me down there while we were singing that song. We, 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 sing, we sing that song, God, you're greater, okay? Anything that is greater in our lives gets priority, does it not? Uh, I think Coke Zero is greater than Diet Coke. So when I go to the grocery store, I buy Coke Zero. I'll pay even a little more for Coke Zero because I think it's greater than the other options. And some agree. I uh, go to the grocery store. I make decisions in our family. I, I, I do, and, and all of those decisions that we do, all the places I want to spend my money on, those are what I'm considering in my life those greater choices, okay? I, I choose as a greater option in my life is to pay the Flint energy bill during June, July, and August. Because that's a lot greater than sweating my behind off in 100 degree Georgia weather in our house. Everything that you and I choose to do or not to do is based on the very fact of what you are considering to be greater. The greater option, the greater choice, the greater decision. Maybe for you personally, it may be for your family a decision you're making. It may be for your career a decision you're going to make. And we, every single one of us is exactly alike in that option. So when we sing, God, you are greater, the question then becomes, is he our greater choice? Are we choosing him over fill in the blank are we are we choosing his day over whatever else we could do on a Sunday are we choosing who he is in our life what he has done for our life over what we believe our boss could do for us or what we believe our even our spouse could do for us or or we can do for our kids or are we choosing him as greater one of the big swings, and I am we're going to my message now, but one of the big swings in our society has been there was a time, a generation of people who though there was sin, and there's always been sin, and there will always be sin, there was a generation of people who considered it greater to have a relationship with Christ, greater to be plugged in into a local body of believers, greater to, to serve God rather than be served by God. And every generation that comes along, we get a little weaker, and we get a little further, and we get a little away from that time. We're doing this series called Modern Family because there are lots of things in our lives that we make choices about every day. And I guess that's probably the bottom line of this whole series is about choices. And probably the biggest decisions you make in your life are the ones that are connected to your family. I mean, that's what your top, one of your top priorities are in your life. Whatever your family looks like, whatever it consists of, whoever is in it, whoever isn't in it, whoever's yet to come in it, your decisions that you're making are based on your family are very, very important to all of us. It's one of our top priorities of our life. And so we're diving into this modern family series. Last week we talked about not only being a woman of God, but being a person of God. And we talked about the things that the Bible ascribes to us and describes to us of how we should live. And, and though one section of Scripture that we looked at was targeted directly at, at ladies and mothers, but it really applies to all of us. I, my desire, I said it last week, is for one day, Austin and Blake, to rise and call me blessed. So I'm sorry I'm not a female. I'm sorry I didn't apply directly to Proverbs 31, but it's still part of my goal. Today we're going to talk about the difference in honoring and obeying our parents. What is the difference in honoring and obeying our parents? Because the Scripture uses both words. So what is the difference? Well, I, I can probably best illustrate the difference this way. When I was a teenager, uh, I like to do three things. I like to sleep late. By late, I meant noon or later. I like to uh, eat a lot, and I like to sit around and watch TV. 
as a teenager. Those three things. I love summer because I could sleep late. I got up at eight and could sit around. Now we didn't have direct TV. We didn't have 250 channel choices. Uh, big part of my life, I had three choices: ABC, NBC, CBS. Uh, later in life, and when I was late teen years, had some, about 12 choices with cable. But that's what I like to do as a teenager. Now, my dad was always, you know, I know you've heard me say this so many times, a hard-working man. He always worked 60 or 70 hours a week, all the time. Sometimes that 70 hours was divided between two jobs. At one point, he had one job that that 70 hours, six days a week was, was going into that. My dad was a very, very hard worker. And he never said it out loud. But I suspect, and I think now as I look back at 47, look back then, I think he was pretty aggravated with my pattern as a teenager. I think he was pretty aggravated that he was up at 6 a.m. going out to work and I was sleeping until noon or 1. I think he was pretty aggravated that he was um, out here working and he had several jobs that were hard manually and physically to do while I'm sitting around watching TV and eating frozen pizzas and whatever else I wanted to eat. He never said it out loud, but I think he's sort of frustrated. So one summer, I think he decided to take a little bit of action. And so he gave me the job all summer long of cutting our yard, mowing our yard. So have you heard part of this story before? Now, there was no riding mower, so it was a push mower. And, and if it was a push mower, that would have been one thing. But our house literally was built on the side of a hill. And so the front yard went like this. And then they had cut out a flat piece where the house sat, and then the backyard went like that. And so I had to, with a push mower, not a good push mower either, it wasn't electric start, it wasn't self-pulling, uh, it was old and rusty. In fact, the hardest part of cutting the grass was getting the mower started, okay? And um, so I had to take this old, rusty, rotten mower and mow this hill. It, the hill was so steep that the mower would be up here and I would be down here. Some of you have had to do that before. Okay, And so I'd have to go across like that. And it would have been great if our yard would have been nice and plush and had nice grass. But it really it was, had hardly any grass at all. Had a lot of ruts where the rain had washed gullies in our front yard. And had a lot of rocks where they just tried to fill that in when they were even building the house and stuff. And so you can imagine trying to uh, get the lawnmower started, push it across there. I don't know if you've ever had this happen. Maybe you have. But when rocks come out from under the mower and hit your legs, you know how that feels? Yeah, you've had that? Yeah, that's not fun. Now, I'm going to tell you, I obeyed my dad to the letter of the law all summer long. Every week I was out there mowing that dirt pile. It looked like a, a tornado was in our front yard with the, the dirt just whipping around. And I never said anything out loud. I never voiced anger or opinion. But I'm just going to tell you that in my mind, there were lots of words floating around while I mowed that yard every single week. Now, here's the difference in honor and obe obedience. I obeyed my dad to the letter of law. I did what my dad told me to do. I mowed that yard every single week. I made it happen. I did it. I did exactly what my dad told me to do, and I obeyed him to the letter of the law, but I can tell you I did not have one ounce of honor in it when I did it. So some of you in here are children... We're all children, I guess, but some of you are sort of older children. We call them adults. Some of you are adults and now have children. I see a pile of teenagers right here in the middle. And so, so the question for all of us today, whether you're older, younger, some of you have brand little babies, and this is going to be very important to you that you're teaching and training them. What is the difference in honoring and obeying our parents? And if there is a difference, which there is, why is it so important? What's the big deal? And so we're going to look in to the Scriptures today because the Bible actually uses, there's four key verses that talk about uh, our relationship with our parents. And what's really interesting is there's two key passages in the Old Testament and there's two key passages in the New Testament. And what's funny about it is, is that in the New Testament, it focuses on one side of it. And in the Old Testament, it really focuses on the other side of it. So let me just, I want to read these four verses just pretty much right in a row. And then I will make some statements about honoring and obeying our parents. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says this, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this this is the right 
thing to do. So obedience on our part is the right thing to do. It says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. This verse right here actually links back to uh, Exodus that we're going to read in just a minute. But it says, it's the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you. And you will have a long life on the earth. And so obeying our parents is one thing. That's just the right thing to do. But honoring our parents actually comes with a reward. It actually comes with a a promise from God himself that if you will honor your father and mother, then things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. Colossians 3.20 says, Children, obey your parents, for this pleases the Lord. And so one of the things that we need to realize about obedience is that obedience is good. Today is not a choice of good versus bad. Today is a choice of good versus better or better versus best. Because obeying our parents and obeying the Lord is a good thing to do. It is a, is a positive thing to do. And so it tells us here to obey our parents. One, it's the right thing to do. Two, it pleases the Lord. Now if you're here today and you're a believer... When you're a follower of Christ, when you read a verse of Scripture that says, this pleases the Lord, that should be something that jumps out to us. Because if I'm a believer, some of my life should revolve around what do I do or not do that pleases the Lord. Now, none of us are perfect and none of us are are faultless, but it should be key to us today of what do I need to do to please the Lord. And those of you that are parents of children, you need to be emphasizing to your children, one of the reasons you obey us is because it pleases the Lord. And, and we do that. So, now let me read the two Old Testament passages. One you're very familiar with. Um, because it did make the top ten list. When, when God gave us the Ten Commandments, this is one of them. It made the top ten things. Of If, 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 if Jesus had a, a letterman show and he did a top ten, this is one of the top ten most important things for you and I to understand. It says, honor your father and mother. Now, can I tell you that honoring your father and mother never ends? I'm 47 years old, and there would be things that I could do or say or ways I could act that would honor my father and mother or things I could do, say, and act that would dishonor my father and mother, even at 47 years old. And so honoring our father and mother, we don't read that and go, oh, that's just until you're 18. That's just until you get off to college. That's just until you get out of the house. That's just until you get married. No, honoring our father and mother is something that we do all of our lives. I would even say this. If your father or mother has passed, honoring your father and mother is still something you do even if they have passed on. It doesn't end. It isn't, it isn't a commandment. It isn't something that Christ told us to do up until... Honor your father and mother. It says, then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is given you. Deuteronomy 5.16 pretty much says the same thing, but there again it uses the word honor. Honor your father and mother as the Lord your God commanded you. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is given you. So it's very important and it's very pointed out in Scripture that we are to obey our parents. But even to another level and another degree, we are to honor our parents as well. I want to make three statements about this. You may want to write them down. They'll be up here. Um, I would tell you to go to version, but we're having internet problems so you can't get there today. Here's the three statements. It says, you can make your children obey, but you cannot make them honor you. You can make your children obey. In fact, you know, that's one of the first things you, you learn early in life. I mean, maybe not when they're just cute and cuddly and, and you know, four, five, six, maybe nine, ten, eleven months old. But, but there comes a time when you realize there's some things I need to correct here. There's, there's some ways my child is going that needs to be drawn back in. Even the little things like they walk up to an outlet. Hey, it's at their level. What do you think they're going to do? It's something new. It's at their level. They want to stick their fingers in there. That seems like the logical thing for a one-year-old to want to do. So part of what we do as a parent is we, we tell them no, right? Now, a lot of times what you do, I remember doing this, and, and many of you probably do this, you say no. 
And they just look at you, and then they look at the outlet, and they look at you, and they look at the outlet, and then they go, and you go, no. They look at you, and they look at the outlet, and they look at you, and they look at the outlet. And you go, no. And then they get like this, and what do you do? You pop the hand. It's very important to teach our children to obey. And it's very important for us to obey what our parents have laid out for us to do. And and for those of you that are teenagers, you need to realize your parents have the best interest in heart. And I know sometimes you think we've lost our mind and you think that we have no clue what's going on in life. But I'm here to tell you that, that when we say no, there's a reason we say no. We're trying to lay some boundaries for you. We're trying to lay some things that will protect you from hurt and those kinds of things. But we need to uh, make our children obey, but you cannot make them honor you because honor, this is the second thing, honor is a heart issue, not an external matter. Honor is not a, this does not create, this cannot, that's not going to be honor, that's going to be obedience. And you cannot make your children honor you because it's their heart that has to come back to honor Even to this day, I want to honor my dad. And so if my dad and I are having a discussion that we disagree about, I will will not say some things that I might want to say. I will not make a point that I might want to make. Why? Because I still at 47 want to honor my dad. It's It's a heart issue. Here's the third thing. A parent's job is to raise them, discipline, encourage them, and love them. That they would then honor you in their life. So we, we have to teach them to obey. And part of that teaching them to obey, I, I don't know how in a generation we got away from spankings to, to timeouts. I, somehow when I grew up, I got both of them because my dad took time out every day to give me a spanking if I had earned it and needed it. But, but so many things have changed in our society when it comes to parenting. We no longer, we no longer uh, tell them, uh, you know, that was a dumb thing to do. We have to find a positive way to say that to them. So we say, that was the best possible way you could have made that dumb decision. We, we have changed in our society, as in, I mean, the United States of America and in worldwide of how we take on our parenting things. And what we need to realize is a, a parent's job is to lay boundaries, is to, is to teach our children to obey, but also to have to discipline them when they don't and let them see that there are consequences for actions. And at the same time, we have to discipline them. We need to be able to encourage them. They need to know that discipline is out of love. I'm trying to build a, a, a boundary for you. I'm trying to help guide you so that one of these days when you are out of my house, when you are living on your own, and you do have to make this decision on your own, something will spark up in your heart that will say, it's probably not the thing I need to do. Now I'll talk a minute to my family. My church family. We're a family. We're, it's just like I said, I don't know what your family unit looks like. We are a church family. And God the Father is the head of our family. Rick Harris is not the head of our family. God the Father is the head of our family. And God lays out in Scripture things for us to do, and He lays out Scripture things for us not to do. He gives us wisdom and guidance, and He gives us uh, pathways that we should try to take, pathways we should stay clear of. Uh, He's shown us story after story after story after story of people who tried to say, no, I'm not going to do it God's way, I'll try it my own way, and we just see what happens to them as learning lessons, life lessons, that we should be able to look at that and say, wow, it didn't work out for them, why do I think it would work out for me? And so God is the Father of our family, and He has given us commandments. And can I tell you this? His Word takes, takes precedent over my opinion. What, what He has guided us to do, what He is telling us to do, it, it doesn't really wash for me to come back and go, God, I really don't like that commandment. I, I really, I, the other nine I'm pretty cool with, God, but I really don't like this one. 
Or for us to read the New Testament and the things he lays out about how to love the unlovable, how to reach out to the lost, how to take the gospel into the world and go, God, I understand it all, but that's just not me, God. Sometimes we read what God has put in Scripture, and sometimes what we do is we say, well, you know what, I'm obeying God. But in our hearts, we're not honoring God. See, some of us are like me with my dad. I'm going to mow the yard to the letter of the law. I'm, I'm going to check it off on Thursday that I mowed the yard. The whole yard is mowed, but there's no honor in it. And some of us live a life in which we obey God, but there's not much honor in it. We check it off, but there's not much heart behind it. I have down here some things. Let me just sort of walk through these. Um, I have down here that our society has changed over the last 40 years. I think, Mr. Clower, you would attest to that, would you not? The society has changed over the last 40 years, but God has not changed. Society has changed over the last 20 years. I'm sure, Dennis, you would... Uh, uh, adhere to that, right? Society has changed a lot over the last 20 years, but God's commandments are still true. I personally know that society has changed a lot over just the last 10 years, but God's Word is as it always has been. Folks, the Supreme Court decisions do not trump God's Word. President Obama has no authority over the Heavenly Father, and Jesus Christ, and the work of the Spirit. Our founding fathers created our country on Christian principles, and in fact, most of our laws that we have originate, that originated were from the instructions and the laws that were given in the Scriptures. So we don't turn our back on God the Father. In fact, we need to be turning to God the Father. If God calls it wrong, it's wrong. If He calls it good, it's good. And it really doesn't factor in what my opinion is about it. The question becomes, am I going to obey God or am I going to honor God? There's a difference. We've talked about that and I think there's a huge difference. I think that when we obey God, we come to church. When we honor God, we come to worship. When, when we obey God, we, church is something I've got to do. But when we honor Him, church is something I get to do. I think that when we obey God, we sing with our lips. But when we honor God, we sing with our hearts. I think that when we obey God, we read the Bible, but I think when we honor God, we meditate on God's Word. See, there's a difference. I think when we, when we obey God, we come, we sit, we soak up, and we sulk. When we come and say, entertain me. We come and say, inspire me. We come and say, do something for me today. And we just sort of try to soak that in and soak that in. And then when something doesn't go our way, we just sit and sulk about it. But when we honor God, we serve Him and we are squeezed out like a sponge for His service. When we obey God, we give our tithe. We give our 10% back to Him. But when we honor God, we give sacrificially to God and to others. There's some great organizations out there like FCA and, and those kinds of things that, that need our help too. When we obey God, we, we find the line of sin and see how close we can get to it. Yet when we honor God, we, we find where the line of sin is we begin to move away from it. It isn't how close can I get to sin without going over, it's how far away can I stay from it. When we obey God, we are blessed. But when we honor Him, we are blessed beyond measure. You see, a lot of us today are mowing the grass spiritually. We're just checking some boxes. We're just doing some things. But there isn't much honor in it. Our, our actions are one thing and our heart is another. 
So my question for all of us today is are we obeying God or are we honoring God with our lives? What, what are we doing today? How are we living today in light of our Heavenly Father? This coming weekend, with, when Austin graduates, all of our family's coming in, and my dad will be here. And when he comes in on next Sunday for church, it'll be really easy to identify who is Rick's dad, because everybody says we look exactly alike. So, so when you come in, it won't be, who is that stranger? It'll be, oh, that's Rick's dad. And can I tell you that at 47 years old, I want to still honor my dad. Am I that dedicated to honoring my God? How about how, does my life reflect honor to God? Or does my life reflect obedience to God? Now, I will tell you this. Some of you have real little itty-bitty babies, and, and I hope that you grab the importance of that today because you get a lot, head, a lot better head start than some of us. I, I can honestly say that when we had Austin and Blake, I, I did not realize the importance at that early age of all of that. And I realize it now, and luckily between here and there, I think I grabbed a hold of it a little bit, and, and I hope that we're raising them to honor us, not just obey us. But, but the earlier you get a start on it, the better. But spiritually, how are we living? Are we living to just obey God? Just check off the box? Just do the thing? Or are we living to honor Him with our lives? I've learned one thing. I, I do some substitute teaching. and um, in, in college, I took some classes that were education-related. And I learned this little trick of open-ended questions. Teachers know about open-ended questions, right? You don't really want to ask your students a question where the answer is just yes or no. Because then you just have no idea. They had a 50-50 shot at the right answer. You really have no idea if they understood the question or how to make the answer turn out to what it needs to be. It's sort of like if you teach math. You say, show me your work. Why are you showing your work? Because I can look at my neighbor's paper and get the answer. If it's a multiple choice, I can guess and guess C. But if I show you my work, you understand whether or not I understand what I need to do. So I have three open-ended questions for you this morning. What are the areas of your life that you are disobeying God? I mean, there's not obedience there. There's not honor there. But you know. But you know that there's some areas there in which you are just disobeying God. I know what the Bible says. I know what God's guidance is. I know what God would want me to do. But I'm just not going to do it. And can I just, I don't know if plead with you is the right word. Can I just tell you, it doesn't work. God's not changing His Word because we don't like what verse 23 of this chapter says. What are the areas of your life in which you are obeying God? God. I mean, what are those areas? I mean, maybe you do read the, the Scriptures regularly. Maybe you do pray regularly. Maybe you, you come to church consistently. Maybe you, whatever, what are those areas that you are obeying? And then this, what are those areas of your life in which you are actually honoring God? What are the things that are going on in your life that, that it's your heart that's out there for God? Maybe it's in how you're serving Him. Maybe it's in an area of ministry. Maybe it's in, in, in the way you're witnessing or, or carrying your light to where you work. What are those areas in which your heart is in it and you're, you're honoring God with your life, not just obeying Him and the things that He's called us to do? In just a minute, we're going to celebrate communion. And we do this occasionally and, and, and we... we Different churches fall into different patterns with it, but, but we, we try to do it just when it sort of ties in and connects with what we're doing. And in just a minute, Matt's coming up to sing a song, and the song he's going to sing is called I Surrender. And after he sings I Surrender, I'll come up and read just a couple of scriptures that guide us into this time of communion. But there's three questions. What are the areas of your life that you're disobeying God? What are the areas of your life that you're obeying God? What are the areas of your life 
that you're honoring God. This morning when they were rehearsing, playing, I was back in the nursery. They have some real comfortable chairs back there if you ever get a chance to serve back there. They're just really comfortable. And I was back there just sort of listening and thinking and praying. And one of the things that spoke to me while they were rehearsing this song is some of the difference in my life between obedience and honor are the things that I'm willing to surrender to God. And so as we sing this song, I want you to think about that. Part of the difference in your life is probably, because you're not that much different than me, probably the difference in obedience and honor in many of our lives are those things that we're willing to surrender to God. And you've got some time to pray to deal with God and speak to Him and let Him speak to you before we come to this table to take of the juice and take of the bread and celebrate what Jesus Christ has done for us. Now think about this. Jesus Christ obeyed the Father, did He not? In fact, He said, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But if not, your will be done. He obeyed the Father. But he, uh, he didn't just obey, but He honored the Father when He went to the cross. We're going to celebrate that in just a minute. But before we do, let's pray, and Matt's will come up and lead us in this.